The, the, the modern mistake that I've been trying to uh, confront uh, in the work I've been doing for a long time, but confront it specifically with regard to music, is the idea that creation is, is essentially uh, meaningless raw material uh, that we impose meaning on. Um, the form this takes in terms of music uh, is that music is just intrinsically meaningless sound that only acquires meaning when we add texts to it. So music doesn't mean anything. In, the form of music doesn't mean anything. That con and so we separate form and content. But for any artist, any architect, any painter, uh, any composer, form is content. And that, uh, unfortunately, for, for particularly for, I think, reform people who are really committed to propositional truth and sustaining propositional truth, uh, there, there tends to be a, 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 a kind of corollary to that, that if it's not propositional, it can't be meaningful. But in fact, uh, a lot of uh, meaning is conveyed through uh, forms that aren't strictly propositional. Um, if I greet you with a slap on your face instead of a shake of your hand, uh, without having said anything, I've conveyed some meaning. Uh, a corollary of this assumption of the meaninglessness of, uh, of creation is the idea that musical taste is entirely subjective and therefore that any effort to form tastes in our children or our parishioners uh, is a violation of their freedom and dignity. And again, I think these, uh, these assumptions about music are worldly assumptions that I think our communities should, uh, should reject and we should be a... a uh, Again, I like, I like Doug's idea about us being a source of envy, um, that, that we should have the best uh, musical habits, um, we should have the best ways of engaging the meaningfulness of creation displayed in, uh, in, in our life together. Mm -hmm.